What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and today I am bringing you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Before I start that though, I want to let you guys know to head on over to MidnightPartners.com. These guys will get your commissions going and will come up with a custom solution to your specific needs. Um, now that I got that done, let us dive into some hellish lore today. We will be talking about one of the Ruinous Four, Lucius the Eternal. This guy is crazy, this guy is beast. He was one of the baddest mofos around, pre-heresy and post, and he's got some OP plot armor, literally. <laughs> anyway guys, let's dive into the Emperor's Children's Champion of Slaanesh, the Soul Thief, Lucius the Eternal. During his youth on Chemos, Lucius became noted for his talent and ability to master nearly any talent. He quickly gained sponsors among the elites of the planet, and he gravitated towards the art of war, most notably swordsmanship. He displayed perhaps sadistic tendencies early on, killing individuals that he claimed were beggars, and he attacked them first. He proved to be a poor teacher often scaring his pupils or cutting off an eye or finger in an accident. When he took part in an annual swordsmanship on Chemos, Lucius garnered the attention of a hulking stranger in the shadows. He dueled against this famed champion, twice his age, and after suffering a blow to his stomach, took apart his opponent piece by piece. As he was about to be attacked by the champion's supporters and disciples, Lucius was saved by a sergeant of the Emperor's children, who inducted him directly into their legion. During the Great Crusade, Lucius was the captain of the 13th Company. His skill with the blade quickly became legendary among the legion. Other members of the Emperor's children considered Lucius to be proud, foolhardy, and sometimes a little childish. Even his closest friend in the Legion, Saul Tarvitz, was wary of him. He was never bested in swordsplay, and the only duel he is known to have ever lost was against Captain Garviel Loken of the Lunar Wolves, who brought him down with a single punch. One Punch Man! In a later rematch, however, Lucius was victorious. In the betrayal of Isfan III, Lucius found himself betrayed by the legion he loved, and he found himself fighting alongside Saul Tarvitz with the loyalist marines of the Emperor's children. As it became apparent that it was Tarvitz who was the hero of the hour for the loyalist, Lucius grew jealous and betrayed his one-time friend. He did this by attacking a group of 30 loyal marines who were assigned to him. He however did not do this alone. While fighting his own men, Captain Solomon Demeter arrived at Lucius' position. He cried out for help and thus duped the Captain Demeter to thinking that the marines Lucius was fighting were actually traitors. Unfortunately, Demeter realized this after the last of the 30 marines were killed. Lucius and Demeter who had a mutual dislike towards each other, became locked in combat during which Lucius killed the already wounded Demeter. After his betrayal of the Loyalist, his combat skills were recognized and he became the leader of Fulgrim's bodyguard of assault marines, gaining the rank of Lord Commander. He was troubled by dreams that made him convinced that Fulgrim was possessed by some entity and he led other top-ranking members of the Legion, including Fabius Bile and Marius Viroshine, into the capture of the Primarch. After ineffective torture and an attempted exorcism, Lucius came to understand that while Fulgrim had been possessed, he had gotten rid of the demon himself. Lucius followed his Primarch on his quest for the Angel Exterminatus, and during this, he crossed swords with Nikona Sherokin of the Raven Guard. The first time, he came away with a scar on one cheek. The second time, he had a matching scar and then was killed with two blades impaling his hearts. He died on this day, but he was later awakened in the Apothecarian, all thanks to Fabius Bile. After the heresy, Lucius continued to hone and better his combat skills after the Emperor's children began to worship Slaanesh. 
Fulgrim organized gladiatorial games on their home planet whenever the Legion was unable to vent its need for the pleasure of the kill on other worlds. And Lucius was undefeated in these, and he was an unstoppable force until he fought Lord Commander Sirius. Lucius died, and his death was an experience of such transcendent pleasure that Slaanesh himself took notice. He could not let such a promising marine slip away, and in the following days, Sirius began to change. Lines began to appear all over his skin. His hair started to fall out. Lucius was back in the world of the living, and all that remained of Sirius was a screaming face in the warped artificial armor. This happened many times since then. Whenever his killer takes even the tiniest amount of enthusiasm, pleasure, or satisfaction from besting Lucius, they will begin to change into him and become just another swirling face, a memory in the armor which Lucius is clad in. Lucius would later appear at the head of an army of Emperor's children during the 13th Black Crusade, inflicting untold suffering on the imperial world of Belisar. Some say that the scarring all over his face is self-inflicted. This may be because at one point he truly was a handsome man, but he resented being called too pretty by some of his fellow marines. His perfect features were forever marred after the sparring match with Loken. The Luna Wolves' punch had broken Lucius's nose, and much to his fury, it had refused to set properly, despite the attentions of the Legion's apothecaries. Some time before Isfan III, Lucius received a pair of scars across his cheeks from the Remembrancer Serena de Angelus, a painter in the 28th Expedition who had already been corrupted by chaos to remind him of Loken's insult to his perfection. He subsequently marked himself with more scars to commemorate his victories eventually creating an intricate network of scars distorting and deforming his once beautiful features. And now let's talk about his awesome yet hauntingly brutal war gear. The Armor of Shrieking Souls Lucius is able to constantly reincarnate within the body of any being that manages to kill him, effectively making him immortal. So long as the killer takes some measure of satisfaction from this victory, this will result in the victor's body transforming and their soul becoming trapped in Lucius' suit of power armor, a demonic artifact known as the Armor of Shrieking Souls. This armor draws its hellish strength from the thousands of souls trapped within it, providing Lucius with enhanced protection from any onslaught that he may encounter. He is also able to focus the residual energies of the imprisoned soul's torment into a lethal sonic crescendo on an opponent's mind at will causing the foe an immeasurable, intense amount of pain. The Comorite Stim Rack Lucius further bolsters his already superhuman speed and strength with exotic combat stimulants, a prize wrested from the gladiatorial arenas of the Dark Eldar. This Stim Rack, that dumps these combat drugs into a system before each duel, was implanted within his flesh by the renegade Fabius Bile a fellow student of the Black Arts and Pilgrim to Hidden Camera. The Lash of Torment In his right hand, Lucius is armed with his personal demon weapon, a gift from Slanesh known as the Lash of Torment. This weapon takes the form of either a whip or multiple lengthy tendrils that twist and coil with a mind of their own. Cruelly barbed hooks run along the length of its sinuous coils. Within this physical vessel is bound the essence of a demonette, and the whips is in turn bound to its bearer, either fusing to and ultimately absorbing his or her hand, or by fusing directly into her spine like a mechadendrite. The Lash of Torment is, like all demon weapons, sentient. In battle it will move independently from its bearer, attempting to coil around any living being foolish enough to get close. Once it has trapped its victim, the lash will writhe and constrict around the hapless being, slowly suffocating them and cutting them to pieces with its multiple barbs. However, the most disturbing power of the lash is that it does not only thrive on the pain and fear of its victims, it also psychically projects these feelings to all those in the vicinity of its actions. Servants of Slanesh find this highly entertaining and wonderfully pleasurable 
but that other beings have been seen running away in terror when forced to experience the terrible agony of one of their fellows caught in the Lash of Torment. Even outside of combat, the Lash's ability to project emotions is a valued tool during the debase and perverse rituals of praise that the servants of Slanesh engage in. The Blade of Lair In Lucius's left hand, he wields a relic power sword from the Great Crusade. Millennia ago, following the Dropsite Massacre on Isvan V, the greater demon of Slanesh who possessed the body of the Pridemark Fulgrim presented the demon sword Fulgrim had recovered from the homeworld of the Xenos, known as the Lair, to Lucius as a sign of Slanesh's favor. This alien, single-edged blade once contained the captured essence of the demon that possessed Fulgrim, but lost much of its power once the demon was freed from imprisonment within the sword to inhabit the unfortunate Primarch's body. Now that the blade is an ordinary power sword of an exquisitely curved singular edge design, but in Lucius's hands it remains as lethal as any blade that has ever been forged. And finally, Lucius also bears the mark of Slanesh upon the armor of Shrieking Souls, and he is equipped with Slaneshi combat drugs intended to heighten the sensations of battle. He is empowered with the powers wrought by Slaneshi's favor, and demonically, physically, strength and durability is also enchanted to him. Lucius has mutated considerably in the millennia since his fall to chaos, and among the physical gifts he has received from the Prince of Pleasure, is a pair of goat-like cloven hooves. Brothers, welcome to the feast. Tell me which among you will be the first course. And that's all the lore we have on this sinister, basically deprived, nasty mofo called Lucius the Eternal. Like I said, this guy is pretty bad. Um, he takes pride and pleasure in making you feel pain and with his demon weapons, oh, you're gonna feel it. And not just you, but everybody else around you. So yeah, this guy is pretty beast. He is further enhanced with all these combat drugs, plus the Mark of Slanesh. Like, man, what else What else does he need? He is like OP beyond belief. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about Lucius. Is he really badass, or is he just, uh, just another Chaos Marine? Which he's not. <laughs> anyway... What other characters do you want me to cover? And also don't forget to check out Midnight Partners because they'll get your commissions done the way you guys want it. Um, please check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, the Instagram page, and our Twitter page for more 40k content. On our Facebook page we post each and every day, especially now that we're getting 8th edition news, so check that out. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out.